Yeah, so I'm just going to share a little debugging story with you. And um, I just, it's, it's not really, um, maybe in the end, the bug is, is not terribly complex, but I still feel it uh, contains all of the essence of what I find exciting about programming, you know, and that is the unexpected. Uh, so one day, uh, a bunch of my coworkers came back from lunch and they discovered that everyone's copy of Chrome had crashed. Uh, and it would just keep crashing. It was like, no, you could not open crash. So obviously productivity plummeted to zero. Uh, and, and I thought this was wonderful already. But, uh, <laughs> um, but you know, um, first principle of debugging, you isolate what changed. And you know, so the question was, um, well, was there just like a Chrome update and that killed everything, but there was nothing online. Um, no, no evidence that this was anywhere else but here. So we're like, well, what else, um, you know, what else happened, uh, you know, in our environment? And the only other thing is we had bought this printer. Uh, <laughs> and then we got suspicious because we had named the printer uh, an emoji. We had named it printer emoji. Uh, so we unplugged the printer, right? And Chrome stopped crashing. And then uh, we plugged it in again and boom all, everybody's copy of Chrome on the entire network <laughs> crashed. <laughs> and so, okay, uh, you know, obviously we start debugging this, but I have to say, Ode said this is, this is the greatest day of my life. That's how excited, that's how excited I, got, I get about issues like this. Um, so what was the first thing, first approach for this? Uh, so the first thing that I did is I dove into GDB on, um, uh, on the system. Now this is actually only Mac OS Chrome. So this was a, a, a company with a lot of, almost everyone was running Macs, so pretty pretty dominant. Um, on Mac OS, you'd usually use LLDB, but uh, old dogs, new tricks, I, I'm sort of more comfortable with GDB. So anyway, we see here that like um, Chrome is crashing in strln, which is the uh, C standard library function to get the length of a string. Um, and uh, so that initially is really exciting because uh, something terrible is probably happening, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, but we, we go into, uh, of course, Chrome is an open source, although we'll get to more of that later. Um, but um, at the very least, we can always, we can always disassemble. Uh, we can always look at the registers. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to do. The, the registers after a uh, program has crashed often tell such a fascinating story. They tell us all sorts of places it's been. But in this case, uh, I, actually, it's a pretty boring register to dump. We can see that, um, in particular, like the stack is, is fine. All these things are fine. And RDI, which is the first argument to strlen, is zero. So we just have a null pointer dereference. It's still exciting because we can reduce productivity in the office to zero anytime we want, but uh, uh, you know, we, can't, we can't necessarily make Chrome dance for us. So the next step is, well, what's happening? What is the printer doing? Uh, and so we, we turn to an excellent tool um, called TCP dump, and there actually is a, an amazing zine that just came out uh, that's, that should be available here, I think, maybe, uh, that, will talk, that will tell you all about TCP dump and how wonderful it is and, and, and how to use it. So I won't tell, say too much about that, but I do want to mention, um, paired with that is another tool that uh, I really love, which is called TCP Replay, uh, which allows you to replay packet dumps. So you, TCP dump spies on your network, shows you what packets are going by your network interface. A TCP replay lets you replay those packets, right? So this was a way for us to figure out um, uh, what, what traffic is actually causing this problem. And so we apply an idea from uh, property testing. And if you uh, don't already know what property testing is and you don't already do it, you should come up to me afterwards and talk to me about it because I think it's a really important idea. Uh, and actually we have the author of uh, an excellent C property testing library called Theft here with us. It's a wonderful library, you should check it out. But a really interesting idea from Quick Check and all these things is the shrinking of inputs. So uh, you have some, we captured a bunch of traffic where the printer was spewing out its weaponized emoji and uh, <laughs> you know, and then we, we bisect it and we, we, we chop it down until TCP replay is just playing back um, you know, just the packets that are causing this problem. And it turns out it's these two packets. And then nicely we can package into a script, you know, starbucks.sh, uh, <laughs> that, that uh, triggers the problem wherever we like. Um, you know, it's very, <laughs> very convenient. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, but so, 
what are these packets? Um, so these are, these are MDNS packets, uh, which is the multicast DNS. Uh, and uh, of course, it's like notable. I immediately looked at the RFC. Um, oh, actually, yeah, I'll get back to that. I uh, looked at the RFC, and there's this sort of quote that I enjoyed uh, that, you know, the, the obvious elegant solution is that everything should be encoded as UTF-8. Um, and of course, so we look at these packets. This is what the, uh, the, the packets look. So M MDNS is um, the, you know, basically, so DNS is this glue that, that uh, sort of essentially keeps the internet together. MDNS is this is this is a very similar protocol, but just for local service discovery. Uh, but something that's interesting about it is it sort of turn, changes the um, uh, kind of the inverts the relationship uh, between servers and clients because basically, unlike DNS, where you're asking a server for something, in MDNS, you're just constantly being uh, bombarded by packets from every device on your network, like this printer, right? Um, but anyway, so this printer is advertising itself. We can see that the service name is 1F5A8 downstairs, printer downstairs. That actually worked right. But this uh, TXTTY register, so this is some kind of Google, Google clown print thing that I don't understand. Uh, that's some new feature. But the, the, the type um, record here is obviously not uh, encoded correctly. And um, so we look at this. So something that, I mean, I noticed emojis have been a part of every successful talk here, uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> so we can't deny their vast importance. Um, but, you know, so one of the ways that emojis are represented is Unicode, which has this large space. And then you have um, different ways of how do you actually represent Unicode on the wire. So the most common way and what MDNS is supposed to use is UTF-8, which is actually this really elegant encoding, except for the fact that there's lots of um, there's lots of sequences of bytes you can generate that aren't valid UTF-8, right? And in this case, the printer is, is spewing out um, F08DA0BD, F08DB6A8. So this sequence that's twice as long as what we would expect. And it turns out that this is like a UTF-8 encoding of a UTF-16 encoding of the printer emoji, right? So some classic, uh, classic kind of problem, but um, wasn't wasn't caught in time. Anyway, why does this cause Chrome to crash? So luckily, of course, there's a sort of an open source version of, of Chrome called Chromium, and we were able to reproduce the problem there. Uh, you know, and it turns out that it's like this very simple problem. Um, so we can see here that we're uh, creating this this uh, string and initializing it with these bytes that we received off the wire, which uh, is always always a tenuous thing. I think you always want to be very careful when doing that. Uh, although in this case, it's not nearly as much fun as we had hoped. Uh, the key thing here is we're asking for this NSUTF8 string encoding. Uh, and if we actually look at the Core Foundation documentation, this says, well, this returns nil if uh, record bytes isn't uh, valid UTF8. And so it isn't, so that's where our null pointer dereference comes from. So it turns out the, the fix that um, you know, restores productivity in the office. It's just this, like, almost a one-liner uh, kind of thing. And so, um, yeah, I said, you know, submitted that, and unfortunately, the, 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 because it was technically a security issue, uh, the, the bug was sealed for a long time, and it took some poking and patches before it kind of finally got uh, fixed. But, um, you know, and so all's well that ends well, except that actually, you know, this printer is still lurking, right? It's still sending out its weaponized packets. And uh, I tried to contact HP um, to report this, and there was just no way to get in contact with anyone responsible. Uh, and probably it's hard to fix anyway. It's probably, you know, uh, the upgrading that firmware is difficult. But consider this their, their public shaming. Uh, <laughs> um, in any case, you know, it was... Uh, a really simple uh, thing in the end, but it just was lovely going through all these systems and having this such an unexpected, huge uh, result from such a tiny thing. Uh, I think is is really the the essence of uh, you know of, of the the unexpected, which is is what's so exciting about uh, programming. Um, so anyway, I think if there's a moral to that story, uh, it's uh, that everyone should go out and stuff every input field with emoji. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>